This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Hey guys, coming at you from January 12th, 2024, and I just watched the number one movie of the year so far. It's Mean Girls, the new the new Mean Girls. This is a new movie based on the Mean Girls musical written by Tina Fey, which is based on the original Mean Girls film, also written by Tina Fey, and let's not beat around the bush any longer. I really did not like this movie. A few things to note, I love the original Mean Girls. It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. It was a huge inspiration to me as a kid. I still think the screenplay is damn near perfect. Nobody really needs to hear how great Mean Girls is, you get the idea. I also haven't seen the musical, but I hear it's pretty good. Which, on that note, I like musicals. I denied this for a while, but I've come to realize that I'm a sucker for them, and they almost always win me over no matter how bad the movie is. Which says everything you need to know about how bad this was. If I had to name a single thing that works here, it's some of the performances. Renee Rapp, I thought she was okay as Regina George. She doesn't touch what Rachel McAdams is doing, obviously, but she captures the character's essence in a way that rarely took me out of the film. B.B. Wood did a great Gretchen Wieners impression, and Alili Cravalho and Jaquel Spivy as Janice and Damien were probably the closest thing the film has to elevating the original material. They both understand what worked about the original characters and expand on them, exaggerate them. Sometimes it sucks and it isn't that funny, maybe it's just high school kid TikTok humor that I don't get, but for the most part they are easily the best actors and singers here. And Gory Rice as Caddy Heron not as great. No offense, but she had zero vocal chops and none of the comedic awkwardness that Lindsay Lohan had for the character. I don't know how else to describe this, but she just seemed uncomfortable in a lot of the scenes here. She does not have the screen presence here to work as a lead. You gotta think at a certain point that maybe that's just the direction, but goddamn did she not really work as Caddy. Avantika Van Danipu was silly, and I like that they decided to expand on Karen as a character. She was always my favorite, but her whole sexy party musical number was like one of the most uncomfortable things I've sat through in a long time. It felt super clunky, not fun at all, not that funny, just, just, why did they do this? Again, I don't doubt that something like that played well on Broadway, but in a film, at least how they decided to go about it here, it really falls flat. Christopher Briney as Aaron Samuels, Sure, I guess. I want to say something mean, but I'm not I'm not going to say anything. Let's talk a little bit about the music. We have to. As I've mentioned, I enjoy musicals. To a lot of people, that might be the aspect that turns them off of this movie. But let me be the one to tell musical deniers that it isn't the fact that this is a musical that makes it suck. It's just a really shitty musical. But the way they mixed it in studio for this it's horrible. There isn't one musical number here that lands. They always feel like they're missing something. The studio production feels like a first draft. The mix is so bad and does no favors for the weak vocals all over this thing. You know when like Raffi Cassidy covers Ellie Goulding in Killing of a Sacred Deer and it's supposed to sound a little flat in a creepy way? That's how so many of the songs sound here. And I don't think it was supposed to sound like that, I'll be honest. It also just felt sonically empty. Half the appeal of cinematic musicals, in my opinion, is that they use film to amplify the music, to make it feel bigger than it is on stage. But here, it literally felt like I was watching something the public was never supposed to see. It, it felt so underwhelming. I haven't watched a movie in a while where, when watching it, I felt in disbelief that I was watching what was the final product. The music is the most obvious example of this. Dull vocals, flat production, and horrible songwriting. Gun to my head, I couldn't recall a single melody or lyric from this entire movie other than Apex Predator, a line that got more grating on the ears the more they repeated it. On that note, when they break into a choreographed dance number, it's almost always underwhelming. I've seen commercials for car insurance with more interesting choreography than this. Hell, if the dancing was just boring, that'd actually be a lot better than what this really is. It's also trying really hard to be a TikTok dance, and that's so obvious when watching it. And I don't think I need to explain why that that is not great. Speaking of eye rolls, there were a handful of moments here that shot my pupils to the back of my skull. But for some reason, there's a line in here that really did it, where Gretchen is like, I made you a Spotify playlist, and it holds on her scrolling for like seven seconds. No, you know what? That's not even the worst of it. There's a math competition at the end of this movie, like the original movie, of course, but this one is sponsored by SeatGeek. You know who had the honor of reading the sponsored by SeatGeek line? Lindsay Lohan. They brought her back and made her read that line. Is that not insane to anyone else? In that moment, I had to just take a step back and realize that I was in a near empty theater watching a Mean Girls musical in 2024 where Lindsay Lohan reads the line sponsored by SeatGeek and I damn near gave up on all my hopes and dreams. Things got so bleak for like six minutes there, it was dark. Which gets to the bottom of one of the most infuriating parts of this film. There are a lot of moments here that are simply recreations of some of the best scenes and bits 
bits from the original film. Everything from get in loser to simple iconic details like the way Tim Meadows yells immediately. The entire Kevin rap scene, the moment Caddy walks in the same time as the horror movie Janice and Damien are watching. I mean, there are loads and loads of these recreations. Not references, no. I'm, I'm talking the original material and just doing it again. And you would think maybe that this rare opportunity to do these things again would give the filmmakers and actors a chance to, I don't know, elevate it, do something strange with it. It's a musical. Go crazy. But obviously, no, that's, that's not what happened. None of these recreations have even an ounce of the same enthusiasm or wit that they were delivered with in the original. They're just shittier versions of classic lines. It's barely better than watching that old Regal intro, if, if you're un unlucky enough to know what I'm talking about. You know, what I'm talking about. And at that point, this starts to feel like a weird, shitty Super Bowl ad with some music videos for songs that don't actually exist scattered throughout it. The time flew by while watching this, I'll give it that. For being just under two hours, I was pleasantly surprised at how fast it was over. I don't know how much I can credit the film for that, as that's mostly thanks to me knowing the Mean Girl story so well. But yeah, <clears throat> Didn't, didn't like this one. Again, I went into this with not terrible expectations. I thought it would at the very least be kind of cute and charming. I'm kind of shocked to see how positive the reception has been. I feel a little crazy. I guess I just, I don't think the idea of bringing a Broadway musical to the screen, even if that musical was originally based on a film, is the worst idea in the world. It can work. But to make it work, you have to do more with the musical numbers and you have to make it your own thing. You can't just reshoot classic lines, right? Otherwise, you end up with something like this, a sloppy, unfinished, forgettable pile of nothing. Guys, 2024 is off to a fantastic start. Thanks for watching. Go watch Mean Girls and form your own opinion and before you head out. I want to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace, the best place to go to build a website and make that idea of yours come to life. Squarespace has a feature called Fluid Engine, which is a next generation website design system where you can start with a best in class website template and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology. They also have a video collection feature, which allows you to host video content, organize your video library, and showcase your content on beautiful video pages. This is super helpful if you're someone like me and you want to showcase some of your work especially if that work is mostly videos. And to make designing that website that much easier, they have an asset library, which is my personal favorite feature, because it allows you to upload, organize, and access all of your content from one place and manage all your files from one central hub and use them across the Squarespace platform. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Karsten to get 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain.